Hello everyone, welcome to Wednesday evening prayer. Um, I'm sitting out on my back porch. Um, it's a beautiful day and um, I thought that as we begin this next um, sermon series, we've been focusing on a passage from Philippians 2 and I thought it might be a good one for us to pray through um, together this evening. So I'm going to read it um, in two different translations. Um, First, I'll read it in the NIV, which some, several of us might be real familiar with. And then I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation, which is just a little bit easier reading level. Um, and they phrase things a little bit differently. And sometimes when we hear um, the words of a passage in a different translation, um, we hear something different, something new. So I'm going to um, read those things, uh, read that passage twice, once in each translation, and then we'll pray together um, through some of the ideas that are in that passage. And I'll leave some spaces where we can contemplate on our individual um, prayers that um, fit in with that prayer. So would you join me as we listen to this passage together? And as we begin, um, let's recall that we come to this place in the presence of God and allow ourselves just a moment of silence so that we can Settle our brains and focus. Take a few deep breaths. Hear these words from Philippians 2. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do not do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky, as you hold firmly to the word of life. kind of longer passage, but there's so much good um, good stuff in there that I didn't want to cut um, more of it out. So just consider what stood out to you as you heard those words. And I'm going to read um, that passage again in a slightly different translation and see if you notice anything different. If there's anything that you're hearing almost as if for the first time if you didn't notice it was there, if you've heard this before. So hear these words. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take interest and interest in others too. 
you must have the same attitude that Jesus Christ had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, and that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you, and now that I am away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. With clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people, hold firmly to the word of life then. On the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless. As you consider those words, what stood out to you most? What is God highlighting for you today? As we listen to that passage and the way that we are called to be like Christ, humble and servants, we lift up this prayer to God. Would you pray with me? Lord, we come to you grateful that we belong to you. We ask ourselves, do we find encouragement in belonging to Christ? Are we comforted by God's love? Are our hearts tender and compassionate? Lord, in the places in this life where we aren't feeling those things, help us to give them to you. Lord, give us your encouragement, your comfort, and Make our hearts tender and compassionate. Lord, we thank you that we bring these things to you, knowing that you see us with love. We are grateful for the way that you are working in our lives and the way that we are encouraged, the way that we are comforted in the way that you warm us with your love. Lord, we consider our relationships and our interactions. We consider Paul's words and we, we wonder about the places where we might not be united with other brothers and sisters as we should be. Places where we have felt selfishness that Paul warns against where we have tried hard to impress, we have looked out for our own interests rather than the interests of others. Lord, we lift up those relationships and situations to you, knowing that you receive us with love. Lord, help us to be intentional in these relationships that we thought of. Show us the ways that you call us to be humble, just as Jesus was, to look out for the interests of others. Soften our hearts and our wills, Lord, so that, like Jesus, we will cling less to the places that we have power, that we're more willing to give up the privileges that we do have. Lord, we want to have the mindset of Christ in these relationships. And in these next moments, we consider how you are leading us to act. What concrete ways, Lord, can we show up in these situations that would reflect the mindset of Christ, the attitude of Jesus? Lord God, we thank you that you forgive us when we miss the mark. 
you don't ask us to beat ourselves up for not doing everything perfectly. You ask us to bring those situations to you and to allow your work in our lives to continue. So Lord, we thank you that your power guides us as we love like Jesus loved. Help us to follow Paul's words, to live lives that shine brightly in this world and point to you. Remind us when we are discouraged that we don't run this race in vain and that our work is not useless when we work humbly and hold firmly to the word of life. God, show us where you have been at work in our lives recently. Remind us of the interactions that are moments of light, places where we can be encouraged to continue the race. Lord, help us to recall the interactions that have been modeled after Jesus. Maybe we recall a hard conversation where we stuck with it and listened deeply. Maybe a conflict that we're, we were willing to humbly resolve. Maybe an, it's an apology we gave or received. Or a sacrifice that served as a blessing for someone else. Maybe it's a time when we simply held our tongue. Maybe it's a time when we spoke out against injustice in a way that those around us could hear and listen to. Lord, remind us of the situations that we have witnessed or been a part of where your work has been evident. Lord, we rejoice. We rejoice that your hand is at work in our lives. We thank you for showing it to us, this work that you do in and through us. Lord, we ask that you will continue to enable us to do this good and sometimes really complicated and difficult work. We know that you guide us by your Holy Spirit to do what you have called us to do in our relationships, in our homes, in our workplaces, in our interactions, in person, in on, in, and in those online spaces with our neighbors, the people we see in the everyday places of this world, in the grocery store, the gas station, and in our interactions that on the surface could look mundane. Lord, you are at work and you call us to be the people that Paul describes who have the mindset of Christ in each and every one of those interactions. We give thanks and praise to you, Lord, for the work that you have done and the work that you continue to do. Help us to be obedient and humble as we go forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I hope that has been helpful today, that you have been able to pray through that scripture. And again, if you're curious, I, I read the um, NIV and the New Living Translation, the NLT, um, and I, I encourage you to read that passage or parts of it um, during the course of this week because we'll be focusing there in our sermon series, but it's a really great passage for a time when there are so many diverse opinions. Go into the rest of your week knowing that God goes with you and empowers you to act and, and to be who he calls you to be in all the spaces you find yourself in.